Let's solve the advent of code day 23 puzzle using Go. This is a fun little Sokoban sort of puzzle where there are A's, B's, C's, and D's, and they need to get moved into their home cells. Solving this kind of puzzle with a graph search always feels kind of magical to me, so let's get to it. To start with, we need a Go program. Let's do that. Watch it run. Let's do that. Great. All right, that works. So there's a board that looks like this. There are 11 dots in this hallway, and then there's four spaces in each of the two rooms. So let's say that a board is 11 plus four plus four pods. The pods are those little A to D guys. And I'll say a pod is a U and eight. And I'll say the empty pod is zero, otherwise A, B, C, and D. And then we, let's just make a pod be able to print itself. Let's say string return of p, p plus one. There we go. And while we're here, let's make a board be able to print itself too. So, you know what? We're probably going to want to fix with font on this and on this. So a board is going, well, here's a, here's a board. Let's say the empty board is that. We'll put some dots in here. All right, and so we want the printed board to look like that. So let's say board string, string. Um, let's see, so let's, let's compute the arguments to printf. We'll say for each of the things in the board, we'll append r. So now we just converted the board from a slice of pods to a slice of any's, which is empty interface. And then we can just do an sprintf of replace all of empty board dot with percent v and then arcs. All right, so let's see if that works. Nice, all right, and let's say 0a, 5b, 11d. All right, that seems like that's working, great. Okay, so now we need a constructor. Let's see, let's make, um, let's make the constructor take a list of pods and we'll put them at the end because it's going to start out all zeros. Maybe we'll just put them at offset 11. So if we mess up, it'll be more obvious. So we'll say that, return B, oh, declare a B. There we go. So now we should be able to say print board of B, C, B, D, A, D, C, A, which is the one over here. Let's see if that works. There we go. All right, great. So then our sample is, let's put up here, our sample equals board of B, C, B, D, A, B, C, A. And we're trying to get to uh, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And we have an input, which is that. So let's take that too. B, B, C, D, D, C, A, A. All right, so now we're all set up to do some things. Great. All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually be able to walk around in the boards. And so there's different costs for moving uh, different of the pods around the board. So let's start down here and start working on the traversals. So the first thing we have to do is declare the costs. And that's going to be A is 1, B is 10, C is 100, and D is 1,000. And then now we need to work out how to move around in this board. It's not like there's no easy sort of coordinate way to do it. And so uh, we're going to want to just, let's just make a list of all the entries. We'll say entry is D plus 1 int. And say the entry room is this one here for A, and this one here for B, and this one here for C, and this one here for D. And so I think that's, uh, let's see, that's two, and four, six, and eight. Okay. And then we also want to be able to move up and down in the board. So let's say up is length of board ints. And uh, we'll, just leave, we'll just leave these at zero. We'll, we'll just know that we never move up to zero, even though zero is a valid parameter there. Um, and so these, this is number 11 here. So 11 moves up to 2, 12 
doesn't move up. Thir yeah, 12 does move up. It moves up to 4. 13 moves up to 6. 14 moves up to 8. Um, and then the second second level moves up to those. So 15 moves up to 11, 16 moves up to 12, 17 moves up to 13, 18 moves up to 14. All right, and we're gonna want down too, but I don't really feel like writing that. So let's make the code do that. We'll say for each one in up, then if it's not zero, then down of uh, u equals i, just inverting up. All right, so now we have all of the moves we need. What do we do? Make the board int, no, int, int. All right, that's happy. Okay, um, good. So now we need to figure out how to move around in the board. And so let's just write a function that's gonna be our move iterator. And it takes a board and a current cost, and then it's gonna call the function f with every reachable new board and new cost that we can find. And so if you have a board and you're trying to move the little pods around, then uh, we're gonna have to look for pods that are not empty, for, for board squares that have a pod in them. And so we'll say for each pod in the board, if the pod is empty, then just continue. And otherwise we're gonna do something like move a pod. All right. And so then let's see, we need to figure out how to move a pod. Well, if we're at position greater than equal to 11, we're in a room and otherwise we're in the hallway. And if we're in a room, then the rule is that the pod can move up into the hallway and it has to immediately step to left or right. It cannot stop at the entry. And, um, and then once it stops, it actually can't go ever again until it's ready to go back down into the right room. So we'll, we'll explore, you can move up and then move anywhere you want in here or in there until you hit something. So. Uh, first, we're going to have to move up to the hallway. So we'll say we'll start at the distance zero, and we're starting at i. And then we'll say for up of e is not zero, we'll just keep moving up. And we add to the distance. And if we hit something, then we can't we can't keep going. So we're going to stop. Um, and I guess we need a rooms label here. All right, so far so good. Now it has to walk in the hallway. It made it all the way up. Uh, so let's try to go left. We'll say, uh, let's see, for j equals e minus one, j is going to zero, and b of j is not empty, j minus minus. So we're just zooming along until we hit something. We'll say, if you can go down, you're not allowed to stop there. And otherwise, uh, we'll make a new board. We'll start with the original board. We'll empty out where we started. We'll put the pod at position J, and then we'll call B. We'll call F with the new board B, and then we need the cost. And the cost is going to be the original cost, plus we moved um, D squares to go up, and then we moved E minus J, yes, E minus J to go uh, to the left, and then that's times the cost of this pod. All right. And then otherwise, we also need to move right. And so we're going to say for right, it's sort of the opposite. J is less than 11. J is not empty. And if down of J is not zero, we still can't continue. Otherwise, we'll make a board. B of I is empty. B of J is P, as usual. And then the cost here, uh, E and J are reversed. J is now bigger, so we'll do it that way. And I think that is it. All right, cool. Let's see if that works. Let's say move, let's say B equals sample, and we'll move from B starting at cost zero. And we'll say, if you can get me a board and a cost, then we'll just print it. And then we'll print B on its own line. There we go. All right, um, let's see what happens. Or is not an expression. Indeed, it's not. All right, that didn't work at all. <laughs> um, we tried to move. We didn't call the function at all from the sample. Oh, that's be no. That's we're in a pod. All right. Well, let's let's just put some prints in. 
All right, I is bigger than 11 here. That should have worked. D. One, two, one, four, one, six, one, eight. Those all look good. What do we do? We said J is E minus one. Let's see. Didn't like that loop. It should have. All right, well, let's start there. J is E minus one. E we know is two or four or six or eight. Um, J is bigger than zero. J is not, oh no, is equal to empty. We want it to be equal to empty. There we go. That's better. All right. So B can come up one, two and get 20. That's good. It can go 30, 20 this way, 40. It has to skip over the entry, 60, 80, 90. Okay. That looks great. C can move up 200, 400. Great. Uh, B can move up again. D can move up. Uh, let's see, 2000, 4000. That looks really good. All right. That looks good. Let's get rid of our prints. Okay. Oh, there's still some prints. Where are they? There they are. All right. That, that looks like that's working. So now we know how to move the pods at least uh, up into the hallway. And now we need to do the in the hallway case. All right. So in the hallway, as I mentioned, they're not allowed to move until they can go back into the correct room. And so um, <clears throat> there have to be you know, room for them to go into the correct room and go all the way down to the bottom where they need to be and only see, there should only be other uh, pods that are the correct letter at that point. So we're gonna have to again count the distance and we're gonna say we wanna go to the entry of P and the first thing we need to do is can we even walk to the entry? We'll say uh, j equals e, j does not equal zero, j goes down of j. Let's just see if we can go down into the room to get to the bottom. We'll say if b of j is p, then that's great. That might be okay. Um, but we have to check that we're still p's all the way down. So let's see, for k equals down of, let's see, where are we, j? k is not zero, k equals down of j. Then if b of j is not p, then you know, there's someone else in there that, that's not going to be able to get out, so we can't do that. And otherwise, we're happy. Um, and if it's not empty, though, so if it's P, we're good. If it's not empty, then it's someone else, and so that's not good, so we're going to have to give up. All right, so now we've checked that the room is available. Um, and we should add to our distance that we're going to have to travel once we get to the entry. And now we just have to figure out how to... Um, how, how far it is to get to the entry. So for that, instead of writing two different loops, we'll just say, because we know where we're starting, we'll say if i is bigger than e, then we're going by minus ones, and otherwise we're going by plus ones. So we'll say j equals i plus dx, j is not equal e, j plus equals dx. Um, and then if b of j is not empty, then we can't get there. And otherwise, we can get there, so that's good. Um, Maybe we'll do a D plus plus here. And then we'll say, uh, do the usual thing. We make a new board. B of I is empty. B of J is uh, P, except J is, we don't have a J. So let's see, We're trying to get to, we need to save this bottom equals zero, or bottom equals E, I guess we'll say. And we'll say uh, here, bottom equals J. All right, so we're getting to the bottom now. And then we just need to call it. Let's see, so it's F of B and then C plus, how far did we go? D times cost of P. Let's see how that goes. And you know what, let's just skip these for now. So we don't have to see them. And to find J, that's where bottom equals P, not, there we go. All right, well that, that didn't work either. Um, that's because nothing's in the hallway, though. So let's let's make a different board. Let's say we're going to put a um, A at zero and a B at um, I don't know, seven and a D at ten. Uh, yes. Oh, 
I kind of forgot what I was doing. There we go. Let's see, board is not a type. That should be capital board. Cool, panic printing, nice. Slice bounds out of range, colon eight with length five. Oh, this should be seven B, 10 B. All right, there we go. So this is where we're starting. A should be able to move one, two, down, down to get there, and it can, so that's good. B should be able to move one, two, three, four, five, and get there, and it can, so that's good. And D should be able to move uh, one, two, three, four, and it can. So that's that's really great. That's all working. So let's put some blocks in and say, um, suppose there is a, a B at one, and let's put into the B, let's see, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Let's put a, a, a 16C in here so that that'll block the B. Let's see how that goes. So this C is gonna stop B from getting in. This B is gonna stop A from getting in. Neither one of them moved. D still moved. All right, that looks like that might actually be working. So let's take that out and see. Um, that looks like that's still working because there's no one. No, it should have shown us the C coming out and it did. Look, one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. Great. All right, so the move actually seems like maybe that move function is good. And that's really the hardest part of all of this. So that's great. Now we need to actually um, make our work queue and do our, our breadth first search. All right. So, you know, in day 15, I talked about being able to avoid having a heap that needs updating because there were so few possible costs that we could just make buckets. But this time there's a, a much larger variety of costs. So we're gonna have to bite the bullet and actually make a work queue out of a heap. So let's do that. Um, we're gonna need a slice. Work is gonna be a struct, a heap of entries. And we're gonna need an entry. And the entry is gonna be a board and a cost. And then we're gonna want an API for our work queue. So let's say it's gonna have an add of a B of a board and C int. And then um, <clears throat> there's something there, we have to add. And we're gonna to wanna to be able to check and see if it's empty. And that's easy. If uh, len w heap is zero, then it's empty. And we're gonna have to implement those. And to implement add, in particular, we're gonna to wanna to use container heap, which requires implementing other methods on work. And it, it can get kind of confusing because there's methods that are for heap to call and there's methods that are for us to call. So let's just make a variant type here. And we're gonna put the methods on the variant type and um, let heap use that one. And so we're gonna call it by cost because it's a heap sorted by cost. Um, and let's see. So we're going to have to implement the three methods that heap wants. Let's see what those are. Um, Heap.interface. It wants uh, the sort interface, which we know is len and less and uh, swap. And then it needs push and pop. All right, so let's just do those. So by cost of len is len and w.heap less ij int bool w heap of i dot costs less than w heap of j come on all right and then we need swap w dot heap of i w dot heap of j w heap of j w dot heap of i and then we need push and pop push, takes in any, and pop, which returns in an any. And the, as far as the heap is concerned, the heap code is concerned, it's an any, but we know it's really an entry. So we'll say w.heap equals append w.heap x.entry. And then here uh, we'll say x equals w.heap of len minus one, w.heap equals w.heap of Len minus one, return x. All right, so I think that's the, the methods we need there. So now for add, we can do our, our fun calling the heap. So to do that, we uh, want heap.push. So we'll say heap.push of by cost of w, so it has the methods it needs, of uh, entry bc. 
All right, and we're actually going to need a uh, next method too to get the next one. So we're gonna say next and return a board and an int. And to do that, we're gonna say x or maybe e equals heap dot pop of by cost and w dot entry, and then return e dot b dot cost. All right, that looks reasonable. Let's see, type entry is a struct. Entry variable of type five int. Oh yeah, let's call it heap entry. We already have an array called entry up above, so it's not so great. Um, there we go. Yep. All right, good. So the code type checks. It's not running. Um, we actually have a problem here. Uh, we didn't do anything about updating the entries as we discover that new costs are uh, lower. So if we find the same board multiple times, we want to update the entry in the heap. We don't want to just keep putting new ones in the heap because the whole point of breadth first search is to cut off this kind of duplicate effort. So we need some uh, map to keep track of uh, where the boards are in the heap. Let's call that pause maybe. Um, and then here we're going to have to check and see and we'll say if the index is if the board is already in the heap or w of positive b then we're going to want to update it and otherwise we'll do the push okay and so let's figure that out to update it we call heap.fix so first we have to update the, the cost so we'll say if the um, Heap, let's see, w.heap of i.cost is, is, is less than or equal to c, then there's nothing to do. And otherwise, we'll say w.heap of i.cost equals c, and then we have to call heap.fix of by cost of w with uh, i. All right, so that's good. Um, but we have to update this pause array as we move things around. So len and less are still okay, but swap is gonna have to do some work. It's not going to be a single line anymore. Push is going to have to do some work, and we're going to figure out what to do in pop, too. All right, so swap. Um, let's say fix i, fix j. We'll just make a new method. And that's going to say w.pause of w.heap of i.board equals i. Um, and then this is fix len heap minus 1. So now at least we're maintaining the index is right. But then in pop, this is interesting because if we pop one off the heap, it means that we're not going to store it there anymore. But then if we see that same board again, we really don't want to explore it a second time. So we want to do something like um, w.pause of x.b minus 1 just to indicate, look, this is done. It's, it's not, not here anymore. And so then to do that, we'll have to say if i is less than 0, then we ignore that too. All right. Well, that's still type checking, so that's promising, I guess. And uh, go from there. Let's see. All right, so let's actually start using this. Um, let's get rid of that. Let's use our sample instead. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to make a new work queue. Oh, we haven't written a new work queue maker yet. Let's do that. That's the last bit of the API we need. We'll return work where the map, oh no, map pause is a make map for int. All right, I think that's everything we need. So we need to make a work queue, and then we're gonna to need to add the sample at cost zero. And then we just want to say, while there's not work left to be done, we'll get the next board, and then we'll do moves from there. Uh, and every time you find a move, just call w.add. And then, let's see. If we win, if B is a win, then we'll print the cost and return. All right, let's see. <laughs> well, that's not working. It's sitting there churning away. Um, let's see. Let's print the length of uh, w.heap and see if it's growing or not. Um, cool, it got kind of stuck. That's neat. Uh, we did pop. Pop, well, let's put some debugs here. And DC. 
was. I want to see if these are actually doing the right things. All right, so we added a whole bunch and then we subtracted one and we have 28 now and 47. And, and then at the end, add, 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 take one out, add, 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 take one out. So actually it's just kind of stuck. It's, um, it's not actually in the loop. So let's just send that and interrupt. What is it called? Day 23 maybe? Um, quit. Let's call it Zex. There we go. Let's see what the stack was. It's in main.move. Oh, it's looping here. It said k equals down of j. k is not zero. k equals down of j. That should be k equals down of k. There we go. That looks better. 12, 5, 21. I wonder if that's the right answer. Uh, it is. Cool. All right. Um, that's, that's pretty encouraging. <laughs> Let's see. Take those out. Nope, we want to keep that. 12, 5, 21. All right, that's good. But I kind of want to see the path. So let's add some code to keep track of the path. And to do that, we're going to need another map. Let's see, work is up here. Let's call it prev. And it's mapped from board to board now. So it says, you know, the, 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 white, the right way to get from this to this board is the previous board. And so we'll add prev there. And whenever we save uh, a new one, we'll say w.prev of w.heap of I guess B equals prev. And similarly here, actually we can just put this here. So now we're recording, this is the best way to get to B is to get to prev first. Um, and then we can have the work queue tell us the path. Let's say, give me the path for a given board. It'll be a slice of boards. And the way to do that is to get prev. We'll say prev equals w.prev of B. Um, path equals w.path of prev, path equals append. Well, I guess I can just do it like this. Return append w.path of prev, comma b. All right, that's good, except that it never terminates because there's no base case here. So what we want to say is if prev equals equals b, then we'll just return the single board. Uh, so. We don't have a good zero value to use, so we'll just use it um, use itself as if you get to a cycle, it means that you're at the start of the path. And then at the beginning, well, let's see what happens. We need to call uh, add with a new prev. And then here, we need to have a prev. Um, let's save that. Assignment entry, no map. Well, that makes sense. Um, prev. Make map board board. Good. All right. That's still working. But now we should be able to say for each board in range of um, w dot path of b um, dot print of b. All right. Let's see. So this is supposed to tell us we start here, there. And then, oh, it's doing a different different one than we are. That's okay. Um, let's let's see if we can find out the cost too. Maybe we can save those costs. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We know we're getting the cost right. Um, D comes out, A comes out, B comes out, C comes out. Um, C goes back in to where it should be, and then D comes out. D goes in, D goes in, like that. Nope, B goes in. A comes out. Or no, this B comes out. This A goes in, this B goes in, this D goes in, this D goes in. All right, cool. Well, that's how you win that particular game. So now let's try the input. Um, and to do that, we just need to change this to say input, input. One, five, one, one, one. All right. That is the right answer. All right, on to part two. All right, in part two, it says that every new board has two more rows, and these are in the middle. All right, 
So we'll do that and do that. And that. All right, and the winning board is still obviously the same, just bigger. Let's see, unexpected comma. Well, that's not an, an surprising. All right, cool. Now we're losing. We didn't find anything. Nice. All right, why are we losing? Um, well, we didn't fix down. Let's, or up, I guess. Let's see, so now the board is actually bigger. The board is now, actually, how did that even, oh, copy was smart enough not to write too much. The board now has four rows of four. Um, now it's really confused. Let's, let's just finish this. To go up from, let's see, 17, 18, 19 is 15, 20 is 16, 21 is 17, 22 is 18, 23 is 19, 24 is 20, 25 is 21, 26 is 22, and 11 plus 16 is 27, so that is the right ending square. Cool. All right, so we got almost everything. We just have to fix our printer. Nice. All right, 47,625, and there's the um, path. It's actually not as long as I expected it would be. Cool. 47,625. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.